What is up guys, welcome to a new video. Got Big Blue VTSS. Yeehaw, so Dad's been, well for those who don't know the car, Dad bought this car cheap off his brother. We had suspected that it just had like a bit of a rod knock. <laughs> we were very mistaken. It was not just a rod knock, it had dropped a valve seat and smashed a piston, destroyed a head, destroyed, it was toasted. Uh, spent quite a bit of money in machining to actually save it. Uh, you know, these LS1 blocks used to be a couple hundred dollar item. It used to be like, you know, if you needed a lifter ball replacement, you just tossed the block because it was better to just buy another block. But not anymore. We actually spent a lot of money to save this block. Anyway, completely rebuilt it. Dad's been going ham on the panel work, getting all the panel work. Uh, you know, re he resprayed the bonnet. It's filthy at the moment. Resprayed the roof. It's looking really good. We're getting there with it. Um, at this stage, it's going to owe us way more money than it was meant to, and we're probably not going to get the money back for it. So I dare say we're probably going to end up just keeping it parking into the shed. But uh, anyway, the point is, or well, the reason that I decided to film this and wanted to document it, is this engine is the first engine that's been completely built from top to bottom by Bo. So Bo did all of the vanes, bearings, Bo did everything. Uh, Bo did the whole lot. So as you guys know, we quickly got Bo. Uh, busy on doing cam kits on Commodores because it's something that we turn over quite regularly and do a lot So he got really good or really well versed in the top ends really quick He's you can just let him go with the cam kit. He knows exactly what he's doing now um, But this was the first engine uh, that he'd ever had like a go at the bottom end of um, So yeah, we let him go ham. Obviously it was under our watchful eye, but Bo did everything uh, And we want to document what this thing does on the dyno so the cam that went in this thing is a little comp cam, stumper cam. We've tuned a car with this cam before with a nice little converter and it was an animal. It's a really, really nice little street cam. Doesn't show up on the numbers. Like it doesn't particularly show huge numbers, but it's just such a huge torque and mid-range cam. Um, I think it was a two, I think they're a 222, 224. Uh, so it's not a huge cam, just a nice little thumper. Uh, and this, was just a mod modified stock converter. So we sent the converter away, they split it open and did what they do. Uh, so mod stock converter, it's about 1800 RPM or something like that, 2000 RPM converter uh, with the mod stock. And yeah, just a little thumper cam. Um, it's just got some tri-wire pacemakers on it. And then we've got a Black Ops uh, catback exhaust system on it. So uh, it's just standard cat sections, which are gonna choke it up a bit. So. Uh, growler intake, so like it's not going to be anything super special, but obviously it's a fairly big deal in the way that it's the first engine that Bo completely built and it's finally going on the dyno to get tuned. But car come out pretty nice with all the paint and everything else. Uh, Dad's put a lot of time, a lot of effort into it. Interior is quite clean, um, so yeah, not a bad car at the end of it. It's just that um, it's going to end up owing us a fair bit, but it is what it is. Who knows? We'll park it in a shed. You never know what will happen in future. Um, the way Holdens are, the way car prices and stuff are going. You never know. It's matching numbers, SS, VT, but first of the LS ones, so something might happen. But anyway, let's see what it do. All right, guys, so we've done run, run. Makes really good power. It's looking really good for power, but it started making a horrid noise. Um, what it sounds like to me is potentially a converter bolt or something has backed its way out and it's hitting on something. That's what it seems or sounds like to me. It's got real good oil pressure. It hasn't dropped oil pressure at all. So it's not a uh, bearing or anything like that. Um, so I don't believe it's anything internally to the engine. To me, it sounds like maybe a converter bolt. Uh, but anyway, 361 horsepower at the wheels, which baby cam, auto, Mod stock converter, just a growler intake and some tri wires. A 360 wheel. That's awesome. That's so good. <laughs> that's really, really good. So that's looking great, but we've got to figure out the freaking hell this noise is because it's horrendous. So we'll sort this out first. Then we'll see what uh, we can keep mustering up. All right, guys, we've done some investigation. It's not a flex plate bolt or a converter bolt or anything like that. We can't find anything in the top end based off just pulling the covers off, so motor's got to come out. <laughs> so, about a uh, great way to end the year. It's about as good as the rest of the year's going, so why wouldn't it end this way? But anyway, I'm not going to bother with it at the moment. It's going to be a problem for in the new year. 
but uh, we'll have to pull this engine out and investigate what the hell's going on. So stay tuned to figure out what happened. Rightio guys, a little update on the uh, engine out of the blue one that Bo built. So the noise, the horrific noise, we ended up just pulling the engine out. Rex did, I should say, because I've had a whole myriad of other issues <laughs> arise over the brake. I wasn't actually able to do pretty much screw all, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, won't get into that in this video, but uh, what we found was nothing in the bearings that was alarming, nothing on the bearings to explain the knock. Um, what we ended up finding when we started looking a bit deeper, so cylinder five, um, it appears that the wrist pin has seized onto the piston. So these are the just Gen 3 um, press pin rods. In the machine shop that did all the machine work, they supplied the pistons, bought it to suit uh, after they fixed the block and the bore. Uh, and then obviously they, they press the, the new pistons and wrist pins onto the rods. Um, so it appears as though just with the RPM, um, must not have been enough clearance or whatever. We haven't got far enough as to pulling the head off and pulling it out yet, but uh, it appears to have seized onto, the, onto the, the piston. And what the noise was obviously is then the piston rocking in the, in the bore really badly because it's not free floating on the pin. Um, so that's what the noise was. The bearings all look all right. Um, so we've got some more investigating to do, but uh, obviously until the machine shop opens back up, there's not a lot that we'll be able to do. Um, so, but you know, it's nothing Bo did. It's just <laughs> our freaking luck really uh, at this stage. Uh, I'm not even particularly inclined to, you know, point the finger at the machine shop or anything either, because I, I don't think that sizing the pistons is really something that happens. Um, they should pretty much come from the manufacturer uh, with the pins that are, you know, they should be the right size from the manufacturer. Uh, so we'll find out when we pull it out and have a look. Um, but yeah, at this stage, I think it's basically probably just a piston manufacturing fault or, you know, one piston was just a bit tighter because uh, the car has been driven around and moved around heaps, but it wasn't until we had it on the dyno actually doing some RPM that something happened. So uh, I reckon it's just heat and it's expanded and just grabbed it and seized and yeah. Just terrible luck, terribly unlucky. Anyway, well that to the list of things that have been unlucky, but you know, it is what it is. This is the performance business. All right guys, so a little bit of closing the gaps in this video. Apologies uh, at the time, the, obviously the GoPro you heard with the audio. I have so many files that lost audio through that period and I'm trying to clear out all of the old, old footage off the hard drive and get it out so that we can I can start uh, editing on the videos that we have been making over the past sort of year and start getting these these new builds that we finished out so what ended up happening is we weren't far off as far as assuming the pin was seized on the piston because it was but the problem wasn't anything to do with machining or manufacturing it was the fact that the piston was cracked and the piston was cracked because that motor let go as i talked about it dropped the valve seat destroyed a piston the first time and there was bits of crap everywhere. Uh, but what happened was obviously when I dropped that valve seat and all that damage happened, it did push quite a bit of metal up into the intake. Um, and at the time we put that motor in the car, we actually, we had a work experience kit here as well. And just between everything that was going on, the four of us, that intake just went on that motor and it was never actually cleaned out properly. So 100% our own fault, 100% our mistake between the four of us that were here at the time. Uh, and it was obviously all right for a little while because there was enough oil in the intake that it kept all that crap in there for a few runs on the dyno. But obviously, eventually, it sucked a bit of the, uh, what was left of the valve seat in the intake manifold from the last let go and sucked it in. And uh, yeah, as you can see, destroyed, as you'll see in the next clip, uh, we ended up destroying two pistons and a head and had to get that sorted and seen to. So yeah, just 100%. A screw up. Uh, it was nothing to do with Bose motor per se or anything. It was all built well. It went into the car. It's just that whoever put the intake on, we don't actually know who it was between the four of us. Um, it was never actually checked and cleaned out properly. So <laughs> that was an expensive uh, mistake on our part, but at least it was our car, not a customer's car. So yeah, lesson learnt there. But anyway, that's a bit of an update of some missing footage from the GoPro. Right, oh, so the big bad LS1 for the VT is going back together after our little mishap. So I ended up replacing two pistons, and this is a new head. So we've got new head, two new pistons, going back together now. Unfortunately, I had to buy a whole set of pistons to get two new ones, which sucked, but hey, it is what it is. Lessons learnt. Shit happens, I guess. 
but that'll never happen again, that's for sure. So, anyway, back together she goes, and uh, get her back in this VT and keep going, because it was making really nice power, so. So I'll have to see what it actually does when it's all, all finished up. All right, big bad bow built LS1 is going back in. We back. Ricky. So we ended up actually just putting a whole new intake manifold on it just because it was too hard to get some of the bits that were still stuck in there out. Um, and we had a spare one, so we figured rather than risk having bits and pieces in that that you can't even see, we just put another one on. So, whole new intake. There you are. Try again. Alright guys, all sorted. Much better this time around. Woohoo! Good result from this little combo. Good stuff. Peace out, see you boy.